Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 21. The 21st book of the Bible is Ecclesiastes. The burden of the desert of the sea. Now when you look up what uh, some commentators say, they say that this is Babylon. As whirlwinds in the south pass through, a type of tornado, so it cometh from the desert, from a terrible land. A grievous vision is declared unto me, something that Isaiah sees. The treacherous dealer dealers treachery. Nature. You're not going to find any good in something wicked. You're either serving the Lord or you're serving Satan. You can't serve God in mammon, Jesus said. What your heart is, is what your heart is going to do, eventually. And the spoiler, spoil it. That's his title. That's what he does. Go up, O Elam. Besiege, O Media. All the sign thereof have I made to eat. Cease. No sign. <sighs> Therefore are my loins filled with pain. That's your center part of your body, your center mass, your private area. Just, uh, your your intestines are. Your thighs, the strongest part of your legs, hold you up. Pain. Pangs have taken hold upon me, as the pangs of a woman that travaileth. And here's a woman, she's about to give birth. And when the Bible wants to describe an extreme pain, it likens to a woman who's going to be giving birth. Without any injections, without breathing any foreign air. I mean, I don't know if the, what kind of medicine they had back there for childbirth, but it's not the medicine they have today. I mean, when a woman gave birth, she was all in pain. Natural, natural childbirth. <clears throat> I was bowed, bowed down. Bent over. Not standing upright. At the hearing of it. The hearing, not the action, the hearing. I was dismayed at the scene of it. And this is that vision. It drives Isaiah to pain. My heart panted. Went into uh, 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 extra beats. Fearfulness aff affrighted me. The night of my pleasure has turned into fear unto me. Prepare the table. Watching the watchtower. That's what you're supposed to do in a watchtower. But be on an extra watch. Something's coming. Eat. Drink. Arise, ye princess. And anoint the shield. And it's a... Uh, i read my note here. It's for the service for the weapon. It's to slip off the protection. To put the weapon in, in, in ready position. The shield is no longer protected. It's ready now for protection. That's what the shield's for. Something's coming at you. You don't use a shield as an offensive weapon. It's a defensive weapon. You put it up when something's coming to you that will kill you or give you great pain. Eat and drink. I mean, that's normal. Fill yourself up. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Isaiah, Go, set a watchman. Let him declare what he seeth. Something's coming. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen. 
a chariot of asses, a chariot of camels, and he hearkened diligently with much heed. Now, I can't picture the chariot of asses, donkey. I would only think that that chariot is carrying supplies. I believe in the Civil War of America, when they used donkeys and all that, that was for the cannons and the weaponry. Donkeys not quick and they're stubborn. I don't know anything about a camel as far as chariots, but I know they ride them. I know there are there are fast camels, but having camels attached to, to chariots. And he cried a lion. Well, put your shield up, your shield of faith. The lion we read about in the New Testament, he goes about cashing fiery darts. My Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward whole nights. He's on duty. He's on constant duty. He's alert. Imagine somebody going around trying to sell you a watchtower magazine. They have no idea of going back. Jesus came back this year. Jesus came back this year. Jesus came back this year. Oh, we're the 144th. You're a liar. You're not being a watchman for God. If you would, you'd be going to people's doors telling them about how to be saved, and Jesus is God. He's the Savior. Not no nonsense. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple horsemen. And he answered and said, <coughs> Excuse me. Babylon is fallen is fallen. Well, where is that reference? That reference is in Revelation 14, 8 and 18, 2. We jump way over the tribulation period. And all the graven images of her gods he has broken onto the ground. Gee, we read over a couple chapters ago about how the Egyptian gods were falling to the ground. Dagon. What happened to Dagon is going to happen to all the gods and the images in the world. Oh, my threshing. And that's when you go about on this cart, slashing the wheat, breaking apart the, the, uh, the, the heads of the seed and the chaff. You ride a sled. It's got rocks and, and stuff embedded on the bottom and someone rides it for weight. And that's like in the judgment and that's like in the Lord, the Lord God coming down in anger. In the corner of my floor, that which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. So Isaiah declares and, and, and faithfully tells what he gets from God. Which God? The God of Israel. That is the God. The burden of Duma. He called to me out of Seir. Mount Seir. This is south of the Dead Sea area. Watchmen. Watch of the night. Watchmen. What of the night? What's going on? What do you have to report? The watchman said, The morning cometh, second advent, and also the night, tribulation. If ye will inquire, inquire ye, return, come. This is the fourth watch, the 3 to 6 a.m. watch. Be wary of the, of the watches of the Bible. There are time periods. The burden upon Arabia. In the forest in Arabia. You wouldn't think Arabia would have any forest. I don't know if they have it today. You look at those maps. I mean, maps from, you know, the satellites and all that place. It looks like a desert, burned, gone land. But uh, Lebanon is spoken of having their cedar trees. 
In the forest of Arabia shall ye lodge. It's a good place to stay. Animals, have a fire, protection. O ye traveling companies of DNM. DNM. They know, who I, they know how to say their name. The inhabitants of the land of Tima brought water to him that was thirsty. Okay. Need water. They prevented with their bread him that fled. For they fled from the sword <coughs> and from the drawn sword. They fled from battle, army, war, and from the bent bow. That's, that's, that's a bow that's being used to shoot. So they fled from an army, from a bent bow, and from the grievousness, grievousness of war. So they avoided war. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Isaiah, Within a year, according to the years of a hireling, and all the glory of Kedar shall fail. If God says it, it's going to happen. The residue of the number of archers, the mighty men of the children of Kedar, that's an important place in the Bible. Shall be diminished, gone, blighted, gone, getting rid of. For the Lord God of Israel, that's the God, has spoken it. And it's going to happen. What God says, it's going to happen. And we'll pick up the next burden. Finish, uh, the next burden picks up in chapter 22. But we've looked at three burdens. The burden of the desert, the burden of Duma, and the burden of Arabia, these burdens that Isaiah tells us that God has given to me, like I said, my own personal description of a burden is when you're going against God and you're not doing right, that is a burden. It is heavy to fight against God. A loser is somebody who does not do what God tells him to do. You're not going to get no victory. You're not going to get any good. And what you think is good is only going to be temporary. You're bound for a destruction. You're bound for a loss with each of these burdens. Until you get right like Egypt gets right in chapter 19. But still in chapter 20, before they get right, they're carried off captive. Their land is made destitute. There's no labor. There's no work. There's no nothing. And when you've got a burden, you're not doing what God has told you to do. You've got nothing. No thing. Not here. Those are two ways you can describe nothing. All you do, have, you have the judgment of God upon you, and it's not for good. There's no mercy. There's no grace. That's not the way to end your life. 